Hello, YouTube. I'm Ray Angel. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. So, I'm a 60-year-old truck driver with aspirations of becoming a professional musician. Will I become a rich and famous rock star, or will I fall on my face and make a fool of myself? To find out, you're going to have to subscribe to my channel. And while you're at it, why not give me a like or leave a comment or maybe... Share it with a friend that might find this kind of thing interesting. All right, let's get to it. All right, well, I hope you guys are all doing good. Um, thought I'd, it's been a couple of weeks since my last video, and uh, I thought I'd just uh, talk a little bit about this uh, Les Paul. Um, last video, I'd, I don't know, it's uh, after the move, I haven't quite gotten everything uh, completely set up. As you can see, my desk over here is a little messy. Um, I need to get some storage for a lot of that junk that's on top of there. Uh, but, you know, my temporary bedroom studio is coming together. We'll, uh, maybe in the spring I'll start working in the backyard garden shed studio. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd talk about this, uh, this Les Paul. Um, this is a 2017, uh, Les Paul Studio. Um, obviously, you know, not as pretty as, uh, you know, some of the others, but, uh, it's got a really good sound. I really like this. It's got the, uh, 490R and 490T pickups, uh, which I think sound great, um, I was watching one of the other channels where the guy was saying he didn't he didn't particularly like these pickups. But I was like, man, I think these sound fantastic. They're you know, it's just like a it's got a a, a brightness. Uh, here, let me. sound fantastic um, I mean every time I pick up this guitar I just want to do ACDC and ZZ Top you know or <laughs> you know anyway <laughs> it uh that's all I want to do. I just want to play ACDC and ZZ Top and that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> I haven't had a Les, I haven't had a Les Paul for a long. Well, I don't think I've ever had a Les Paul before. I had a I had a Firebird for a while. Um, <clears throat> Les Pauls are generally too pretty for me, but this one is just right. Um, one of the things that I like about it, uh, a problem that I've had with Gibsons in the past, is this uh, bridge saddle uh, to get it to intonate sometimes you have to take that saddle take it out turn it around the other way uh, so it'll go back far enough um, let me see if I can get closer and let you see that yeah you see how it's uh, kind of triangular and uh Sometimes you have to, like I said, take take that bridge saddle out, flip it around, and put it back in so that that edge is at the back instead of the front of the bridge. Can you see that? Anyway, um, this one didn't need that. This this one set up and intonated real well. Uh, and also, uh, it's it's staying in here. It doesn't have the um, g-string problem that a lot of Les Pauls have and the only reason I can figure for that is first of all when I strung it up I put a little uh, three in one oil in my nut slot but also uh, see if you can see this 
those nut slots. See how those center strings are not exactly straight. They kind of angle toward the uh, tuning keys. Can you see that? Anyway, you know, the here, they're, this one goes pretty much straight, but this one kicks back this way a little, and this one even more, and then this one goes the other way. So maybe that helps it stay in tune because it's not, you know, it's, it's not such, such a sharp angle there. Um, anyway, uh, what else I want to talk about? Um, let's see. Oh, man, there was something else. Um, my daughter has named this guitar the Gronkle after one of her, uh, after a cartoon character uh, in a dragon movie. I don't know. Maybe Disney won't sue me for that. How to Train Your Dragon. One of the dragons is called the Gronkle. Or it's named Gronkle, but... That's what she named this guitar. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what little girls think? Um, one thing about this, one thing that, uh, that does bother me about this is the nut height is a little bit high. I probably can't show you that, but um, that nuts, the nuts slot, especially on the low E string, is not cut quite low enough. So I, uh, I'm not sure if I'm, that's the kind of work I want to do myself. Uh, I might take that to a tech and get them to cut that because I've never done nut work. I've never worked on nuts before. Um. <laughs> Sorry, the sixth grader in me is is. <laughs> anyway, um, get somebody else to maybe work on that nut a little bit. So, what else is going on? Um, I think. I've been, I've been doing, trying to look up research and understand about uh, uploading cover songs onto YouTube. And uh, I just found it more and more confusing. Apparently, YouTube, a couple of years ago, used to have something where you could search a database and find out which artists they had agreements with and which ones were okay to upload their songs I'm just thinking if I do a search on YouTube and somebody else has done uh, uploaded covers of that song, I'm probably safe because you know, I'm not I'm not doing this to make money from YouTube. Um, uh, if anything, it's sort of a if I want to get a gig out someplace. I can send somebody a link to my YouTube channel and say, hey, look, here's a list of cover songs that I do. And, you know, you can understand who I am and what I do and all the rest of that kind of thing. Um, I've also occurred to me, oh, before I get into that, let's uh, let you hear what the neck pickup sounds like. <laughs> Why am I playing in D? I am not warmed up. It is... Yeah, it's 3.30 in the morning here. I'm kind of just out of bed. Everybody else in the house is asleep, so I thought, okay, I can make a video. But I am not warmed up. My fingers are not playing what they ought to, so forgive me. But mm. And both pickups. Get 
get that neck picked up. It's kind of got that. Kind of a Santana vibe. <laughs> Sounds all right. Anyway. Um, oh, where was I? Oh, yeah, I was talking about cover songs and uploading cover songs. And I have no idea how that works. And I don't know. I don't want to get a copyright strike because if you get too many of those, they shut down your channel, but at the same time, uh, I'd like to program my Digitech Trio, and uh, be able to do some cover songs, so I don't know, I can show people what I'm about, but uh, the other thing that uh, I thought about, <coughs> um, back in the day, 10, 15 years ago, I uh, I used to do a lot of busking, you know, playing on street corners uh, for tips, and um, it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Um, what was what was really great about it was you know if you, if you play in a, a nightclub or, or something uh, your job is to sell whatever they sell at that venue right you know, you're playing in a, in a bar you know your job is to sell beer uh, that's that's what you're there for that's that's why the owner hired you is you know to keep people there and they will buy more beer um, I'm kind of tr troubled by that. I don't like it. And what I liked about busking is it's just me and the music and the people that like it. Um, people that don't like it, you know, they walk on by, but you know, maybe one in 20 or one in 50 or one in a hundred people will enjoy what you're doing. And they'll stop and listen and maybe throw you a tip or whatever and have a little conversation. You know, and you get this nice human connection. Um, and it just it's just about, you know, the music and the connection with the people. Um, and it struck me that's, that's really kind of what YouTube is about. You know, I mean, you've got all these guys with their Patreons and online tip jars and that's it's really the same kind of thing i mean you know it's sure youtube's making money off this you know google but uh it's really just all about <coughs> me connecting with you and uh finding your audience and uh so I find that appealing. It, it so it struck me as you know, YouTube making YouTube videos is kind of like busking on street corners. You know, you're just kind of putting it out there and hoping somebody uh, finds you and connects with you. Um. Also, I read. Well, let's see. I read. I bought the audio version of a uh, Amanda Palmer's book, uh, "The Art of Asking." If you don't know her, she's half of the Dresden Dolls and you know, had some hit songs and um, uh, disagreed with her record label and has gone totally fan funded uh, and uh, had some success with it. She did a TED Talk, The Art of Asking. It's, it's, it's worth watching. It's really cool. She's, uh, she's got some interesting ideas. She also did some busking. She was, you know, just a human statue kind of thing. Um, but it was a good lesson and uh, insightful and, you know, kind of, a <coughs> excuse me, I kind of connected with it uh, through the busking and through making YouTube videos. Just basically somebody who's out here doing content, um, not necessarily, I don't know, this, I, I'm doing this because I enjoy it, you know. Um, and uh, I want to connect with people, and I want to play music, and 
and all that. But uh, that's what it really all comes down to. Is I just, I just, I just love the kind of music that I play, and uh, I hope somebody else will love it too. And we can connect. And if you want to throw me a tip or something, that's great. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm. Last video was way long. I don't want this one to be quite that long. Uh, so I guess I'll end it here and. Uh, yeah, time to uh, pass the hat. <laughs>